Thanks so much for downloading the episode on the show today. We talk about the passing of Burt Reynolds and are there any macho men left in Hollywood? Also, our interactions with the elderly and babies. This and a wood chipper and our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Thanks so much. Enjoy the show. It's another uncensored look at the world around you from sisters who will say just about anything to anyone at any time. It's the Uggs. Jamie. I hope that I live to be 100. I mean, there's a lot of life, man. Paula. Ah! Uncensored as always, it's time for the Ugly Truth. Welcome to the Ugly Truth, episode 305. Oh, we are sisters who podcast. <laughs> God damn it. We will get Sorry. this right. You know what? Maybe we'll have producer Dub create an intro that says sisters who podcast so we can be relieved of the responsibility of remembering that we're sisters who podcast. I agree. <laughs> I do too. Put a pin in it. Producer Dub, fix that please for us. Thank you. Okay. So big news last night, Burt Reynolds passed away. And I mean, he was only he was only 82. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. He's only 82. Well, I put it in perspective for Ryan because um, he's like, wow, he's like 82 and is 82 is young. And I'm like, well, John McCain was 81. He's like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> John McCain looked older. Well, he he had lived many lives. Yes. I don't really know what Burt Reynolds looked like at 82. I do remember he was supposed to be in the Quentin Tarantino movie that's that's being currently filmed about Marilyn Manson. Is that the one that Leonardo DiCaprio's in? And Brad Pitt, yes. Wow. He was scheduled, he had a part in it. And Aww. I read yesterday that he did not start filming. So his role will be recast, unfortunately. I gotcha. It's sad, but well, it's funny when I saw that Burt Reynolds had died, you don't remember that he looked old ever because he was such a legit movie star that right. he was one of the last movie stars, really, if mm-hmm. you think about it. Like when Clint Eastwood passes away, it'll be kind of on that level. But Clint Eastwood is kind of such a d- dick now because he's an old man <laughs> and he's actively a dick. So right. Burt Reynolds probably was, too. Because he was such a macho man. Right. And those kind of don't exist in Hollywood very often anymore. The Rock is a macho man, but he shows he's very good about showing his soft side. You know, his wife, he's got daughters and he's really like... He does charity and... Right. And even if Burt Reynolds did all of that stuff, you wouldn't know it. That's not his persona. Mm -hmm. You know, there's not a lot of... Um, Hollywood leading men right now that are like that. They're just not macho men. They're, you know, and when you think, and when I say macho men, I mean like, you know, hey, I like the ladies. I I like a good stiff drink and I like cars and I do all my own stunts and, you know, all Mm -hmm. that stuff. That He's a womanizer. You know, he likes your typical hot chicks. You know, that's who he was. And I think that's who he really was. And that's why a lot, that's why he went through so many women all the gorgeous women of Hollywood back in the day. And I do mm-hmm. remember Sally Field. He, I think he said that she was like the love of his life. I don't know if that's true or not, but it was a real sweet thing to say. And it really pushed that role, the bandit role, and how he really, you know, he was her soft spot. I thought that was really sweet. That is sweet. And considering yeah. that she's not, you know, a fast <laughs> woman at all. <laughs> no, not at all. So who knows, but I was sad to see that he passed away. I really was, because there's not a whole lot of movie stars like him anymore. And I honestly, I can't think of any right now. Maybe Bruce Willis, but he's not much of a womanizer. He's not much of a, you know. I think he's remarried, so. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. I mean, I guess Leo, but he's such a granola eater, you know. He's not. I mean, I get, like, Instagram updates from him talking about, like, save the rainforest and the elephants. Yeah, I don't think Burt Reynolds would ever have done that. (laughs) But, I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio isn't quiet about the fact that he only dates models, so. Well, that's okay. I mean, you know, he's Leo DiCaprio. He can do whatever he wants. I mean, I'm just thinking, I can't think of an actor who portrays that persona anymore, where they're, every guy wants to be him, every girl wants to sleep with him, you know, it's just, there's just not, but, but they're considered tough, 
one of my favorite movies that he did was Hooper when he played a an aging stuntman. Oh. Jan Michael Vincent was a young buck that was coming in to learn the ropes. It was just, he did all his own stunts. He did everything, you know, and wow. I just don't think it's like that anymore. I just, well, first of all, they wouldn't allow it, you know, with insurance and stuff. You the can't. only actor I know that does their own stunts is Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise. Yes, you're right. You know what? He would be a dude that I would consider a man's man if he wasn't so crazy about his religion. He's insane. If he had left that private, people would consider him like a Burt Reynolds because he every woman wanted to be with him and every man wanted to be him. That's true. Doing his own stunts. is this, You know who else is kind of like that? Keanu Reeves. No. Keanu Reeves is like that. I think he's adorable, personally. God. No? After I saw The Matrix, I'm like, what's up with this guy? <laughs> well, it's a movie. <laughs> but he does a lot of his own stunts. So, mm. but that, I mean, even then, though, I mean, they're not, they're not that. They're not the cowboy, rugged, you know, hardcore dude. Stop thinking of Cowboy Cerrone. <laughs> oh, God, Paula. <laughs> He was on Joe Rogan a couple weeks ago. I was just, oh, I couldn't stop listening. And, you know, the thing is, is like Joe Rogan, he's a tough guy and everything, but he's got daughters and a wife and all that stuff. Cerrone had a, a baby, a boy, shockingly. Of course. Didn't uh, they name him Danger? Yes, they did. That's not his official name, but that's what he calls him. And he's like, he's going to raise him to be tough. And all I can think of is the mom going, please don't hurt my baby. Just wait. Wait till he's older. Please. You know? I think she's just as crazy as he is because there's a picture of them water skiing and she's mm. like six months pregnant. I saw that. <laughs> I saw that. She probably is. Everybody should know someone like Cerrone. Everyone should know Cowboy Cerrone in their life. There has even, to be more of those guys. I, I don't think I know any. I meant men. There, there has to be those men in, in our life. Well, Everybody, probably not in California. I don't know. I think they're out there. We just have to. We just have to look hard. Maybe your, maybe your coin guy is. Oh yeah, he's kind of a manly man with his five daughters. <laughs> so he has a soft side, is what you're saying. <laughs> anyway, I'm sad. Burt Reynolds died. He was one of the first movie stars that I remember knowing about. Like he was the one of the first. When you're watching movies, I was telling Daryl um, when he died, I said, you know, it's really funny. This is the weirdest memory that I came up with is when we moved to Sacramento to escape all of our father's infidelities. <laughs> we came up here to get, to start fresh. We a cable was really, really new. It wasn't something that people had yet. It was, I mean, very new. And so our parents purchased cable when we got up here. Because there was a Muhammad Ali fight that was going to be on, and there was going to be an Elvis special, both on HBO. Wow. And so they they were both big fans of Muhammad Ali and huge Elvis fans, and so they got cable. That was when I first started watching movies, because when we were growing up, our mom, shockingly, was very into, if it's not educational, you can't have it. And uh, no sugar, you know, carob chocolate, you know, canning mm -hmm. her own foods and all of it. Very hippy dippy. And so HBO was kind of a novelty for us because we're like, what is this? You know, we were only out about Mr. Rogers and Sesame Street and, you know, the occasional, you know, band American bandstand in the morning. <laughs> you know, that was it. <laughs> and cartoons. I said, I remember that specifically. And they were watching Jaws for the first time. It was on cable and it was a big deal that Jaws was on TV that you could watch it. And so I wasn't allowed to, obviously, not allowed to watch it because it was R. So they sent us to bed and I came downstairs because I, first of all, I'm a hardcore horror movie junkie anyway. And <laughs> I was probably seven at the time when this was all going down. So I was sitting on our stairs and I was looking, peering around the corner watching Jaws. And I heard, of course, our father had the TV up super duper loud. Mm -hmm. and so you hear that, dun -na, dun -na. And so I remember turning and and peeking around and seeing a horrific scene when the guy at the end gets eaten. Oh, God, that's the worst. I know. And it, to this day, it still affects me when I see it. Like, a, a especially struggle. when he's reaching, he's like, help me. Oh, my help God. Me. It's like, I, I, 
and what do you do in the real life? What would you do? It'd be like, I can't help you. I'm like, you're you would, like, you're gonna die anyway. <laughs> like give him a stick or something. I don't, I don't know. know. Here, take this stick. Take this rope. I, yeah, here. Hey, will this work? Will this help you even though you have your legs are digested? So I just remember going, oh, my God, and then running back up the stairs. After the novelty wore off, we were allowed to watch HBO. And so Smoking the Bandit was one of the first movies that I saw on HBO. And I remember mm-hmm. thinking how great it was and all the sexual innuendo, all that stuff, totally over my head. Because I was a of kid, course. very little, didn't have any clue as to anything, and didn't realize how racist Beaver T. Justice was or any of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, you don't even think about it. So it's one of my most favorite movies. And of course, the outtakes at the end are the best part. When they roll credits, mm-hmm. they show all the outtakes of all the mistakes oh, right, that were made. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah. The- I mean, I just remember all of it. And every movie he did, for the most part, I loved I just I think it was because he was one of the first movie stars that I was aware of. And I think that's why. Same with Sally Field. I love her, too. And it's probably for the same reason. So anyway, so speaking of I, as you know, it's the constant saga. I'm going to the dentist all the time. I went to the dentist last week. It was just a quick checkup because I've got these trays that whiten your teeth and stuff. And so they were just checking to make sure there were no like weird spots or anything like that. So I went. It was like a five minute appointment. And so I'm sitting there waiting for my turn, and uh, there's a gentleman who is, I mean, do you remember that movie Little Big Man with Dustin Hoffman? No. Okay. Well, in the beginning, they have him in old man makeup, and he literally looks like a pile of skin. He's so <laughs> old. And he's I, he's supposed to be like 116 or something in the movie. It's not, it's it's ridiculously unrealistic. But at the time, you know, so they made him as aged as possible. Anyway, so there, I walk into the dentist office and there's a gentleman sitting on the couch. He is incredibly old and he's wearing a hat that's way too big for his head now because he's shrunk. You know, old people shrink. Yeah, he's a veteran, and I. I didn't want to look and see what year, what what war, because it doesn't matter, but it was probably World War II. <laughs> but his son was there. And so the receptionist calls the son up and says, okay, I can help you now. So he goes up and he had to pay, it was like $1,800 bill for oh his my father. God. He probably got like a whole new set of dentures or who knows what. They probably just did a number on his mouth you know, getting him as healthy as he can and then probably gave him dentures or whatever. And so he's up there taking care of the bill and delayed, but alert and aware that his son has left him on the couch and he is pissed. He is mad that his son left him to take Uh care of business. So he, he sits there and all of a sudden he goes, I'm 97 years old. Did you see my son leave me here behind? And so (laughs) he gets up slowly but he gets himself out of the couch and he starts walking with his little walker that has the four tennis balls at the bottom right he is walking so slow but he's walking (laughs) and he is furious and there's a woman sitting in a (laughs) i feel like i'm watching a movie there's a there's a overweight middle-aged woman sitting in a chair watching this go down and he stops and he looks at her he goes can you believe he goes i'm 97 years old she goes well yes and he goes lost my wife six years ago and she's (laughs) like well i'm i'm very sorry to hear that and he goes i don't know if i'm gonna make it he goes i can't even believe i'm alive he's like i should be dead by now and she and so this woman thank god it wasn't me (laughs) that he's addressing she's like well you've had a really nice life and he just keeps walking. And I'm like, he's not dead yet, lady. God, he's still here. He's kicking. Hardcore spicy, too, by the way. Maybe he was trying to pick up on her. I don't know. He was pretty agitated. And so he keeps walking. He gets to the, there's a wall where like an entryway for where the door is. So there's like a little half wall. He he grasps that wall like it's saving his life. <laughs> and finally... He's close to me, so I'm like, I, oh I look up because I'm like, okay, I don't want to be the asshole that ignores the, the almost 100-year-old man who clearly is trying very desperately to get to the counter to take care of his bill, and I don't want to be the one that just ignores this. Does so, the son not hear any of this? I think the son doesn't care right <laughs> now because he deals with this, obviously, all the time. Now, 97, this dude is in his, he's our parents' age. 
Like he's not a young buck. You oh, know? Right, I right. mean, 97. I mean, the dude is not a youngin. So he gets up there. So he grips this wall with his little wrinkly hand. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like his knuckles are turning white. And then he finally gets up and he practically throws himself onto the counter so he can brace himself. And I'm just going, wow, he was not going to let this dude handle this on his own. So he walks up there. He goes, I am 97 years old and he left me behind. And the son, not a peep, oh. not a peep. And then the woman, and she's like, well, I'm glad you made it. You know, here <laughs> right. you are. And so he goes, well, how much is it? And so she goes, it's $1,800. And he goes, he goes, write that check, Junior, you know. And he's like, you know, no words. I, the son never said a word. And then he, he goes, he goes, now you look over that check real good and make sure he didn't make any mistakes. Oh, my and, God. And she's like, yes, sir. And he goes, do you need my ID? <laughs> <laughs> she's like she goes no sir i think we've got it and he's like all right he goes because i'm 97 and she's like yes you are first of all i hope that i live to be 100 i mean there's a lot of life man and you could you could talk to people about that shit you know oh my god what it was like 100 years ago when you were born or whatever you know but he he was he was having none of it. He was like, no one's going to treat me like I don't exist, even though I wish I was dead. And, you know, I'm going to handle this, all of it, <laughs> all by myself. It was. It wow. I see. I don't want to be that age where I just keep telling random people that I'm 97. <laughs> I know. Maybe it was one of those things where he's just like, I can't fucking believe it. I can't believe that I outlived my wife. I really didn't think I would. Honestly. Yeah, really? You know, I mean, 97, that means, so she was 91 when she passed away. Assuming they were the same age. Right. she was younger? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. And, I mean, 97, so 54, 70 years ago, he was probably in the military. 70 years. So what is that? Is that Pearl Harbor? Yeah, because I think the oldest Pearl Harbor survivor is 100. So he could easily, so he was in World War II. World War II for sure. I like talking to old people that are that old personally. I like to hear their stories because it, life is so different now. It's only good if they can hear. If they can't hear you, then that's what I hate the worst is they're just <laughs> yeah. like, what? And you're like, oh. oh. No. <laughs> it's like, what? Did, well, uh, here's the other interaction we had. Actually, Daryl had it. So we have this big oak tree on the side of our house. You've seen it. Mm hmm. It needs to be tri it needs to be cleaned up and cl trimmed very badly. Mm -hmm. It's expensive, and but we need to do it. It's starting to it's on the roof, and our neighbor Fran, who is probably in her late eighties, I always underestimate this woman, and I really wish I didn't because she's old, but she is not. She's like this gentleman, this ninety seven year old. So he was outside, and Fran's daughter was there going. They t they go for walks, and so they were getting ready to go on their walk, and Fran's daughter said oh hi and Fran's like oh hello neighbor and because she doesn't remember our names and so <laughs> Daryl said hey I'm so glad I'm catching you we would love to take care of this oak tree I just want to let you know because it's not on our pro not on our property but we would love to you know pay for it to take care of it and she said oh you know I come out and I stare at this tree every day and know that I have to do something about it and then I just sigh heavily and turn around and walk inside because I don't want to deal with it thank you so much yes please and the daughter's like actually we have made some calls about the tree recently because we want to get it done before winter comes and uh, so we can totally we'll absolutely help you with it and they're ripping up her driveway next week so I mean money apparently is not the issue so that's good news. And so Daryl goes, yeah, he goes, I just, we need to get off the roof and all this stuff. And she said, she goes, don't go up there. <laughs> and and Daryl goes, okay. She's like, my brother went up in a tree. He fell out of it. He was never the same. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and then she just kept walking. And I said, take heed of Fran and her advice. Don't really? go up in the tree. She's a smart lady. She is a smart lady. And so I said, just don't. I love old people when they're like that. I, I love the elderly. I very rarely come across an elderly person who I can't charm in some way. They just want respect, really. You know, they just want to be reminded that they exist and that they 
they deserve respect still just because they're wrinkly <laughs> doesn't and they walk slow i have a fear of the elderly you because do? Why? Well, every time we had to go visit grandma at those convalescent hospitals <laughs> oh, and then yes. you know you walk past someone sitting in their wheelchair in the hallway and you yeah. just like smile at them and then they're like <laughs> <laughs> you know, and then they start screaming at you yeah they can freak you out w- were you there when uh when grandma was she was dying and so, but she chose to stay in this hospice care she really liked it there and so she stayed there until she passed away and she had a uh, a bedmate a roommate who was an older woman and we used to call her a witch do you her remember was, her her name was dranilla dranilla with the long gray brown hair black hair <laughs> yes. I remember when she would sit up and she looked like she was levitating. <laughs> yes, and her arm would go up because there was this male caller that always came in. Yes. And she's like, get out of here. <laughs> Drandilla. I have a problem with old people. And what was funny is Grandma would be like, oh, just ignore her. <laughs> she's just crazy. God. God, she was a yeller too, from what I recall. Yeah, she was, she, not, ugh, I she was horrifying. But I mean, obviously, that wasn't private care. That was like, <laughs> no, <laughs> the public care. Get out of here. You know, she so. was the, she was she was scary. I didn't like and she always God, she could just drill a hole into your soul when you would walk by her bed. You're all, hi, yeah. grandma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she was the first bed. You had to walk past. Yeah, her. you had to walk past her in her long white nightgowns. Oh, God. God, she, she was, was terrifying. Creepy. She and looked then, like she would have been a tall person. <laughs> she did look like she was tall. Yes, I'm glad she was bedridden so we didn't have to see that, right? Right. Scary. Anyway, the other thing that happened is now Malia is, she cheers and she hurt her wrist. So we let it go for a few days and then, or like almost a week. And finally, she started wearing a wristband, like a, like a, a what are, what you call it? Like what an are this ace thing? bandage? No, yeah, but they're the black ones that have Velcro. Oh, So she okay. started wearing one of those. And I said, what are you doing? And she's like, well, it really hurts. I'm like, all right, fine. I said, well, you know, I'm not going to be that asshole parent that says you're fine and you're just being dramatic. We'll go to the doctor because the one time that I decide not to take you, I'll take you to the doctor in a month. I'll go, oh, yeah, well, this had been broken and it's healed poorly. <laughs> so we need to, oh, you know. Oh, my God. So I didn't want to be that parent. So I'm like, so let's go to the doctor. So we go to Dr. Grant, who is our pediatrician, just mm-hmm. like yours. Mm-hmm. So we go in and it is full of children. Shockingly, I know that there's a pediatrician's office that has kids in it. And so we're sitting down and the children are poorly behaved. And usually it's because they're sick or they had to get a shot or something. That's why they're bad. And so I'm just sitting there and there was there was these two kids and they kept like hip checking us. They would walk by us and like they had no regard for our legs and they would just walk by and like slide across them or hit them with their booty or whatever. And Molly and I look at each other and we're like, okay, it's just not me. It's just not you. Okay. So we were both in agreement that they were brats. We've already agreed. One went tearing down into the into the doctor's area, started running around into all the rooms and stuff. Bad behaved. And then there was these other two little boys. One was like five and one was probably two or three. And they started wrestling on the ground and the three-year-old was kicking his ass. Mm. He was like punching him and stuff. And the parents are completely ignoring it. Ignoring it completely. They're just like, so anyway, we're trying to get this HMO. And I'm just like, wow. And I was judging harshly. Judging harshly. I'm like, we just let this happen now in public? We just let children roll around on the floor, this filthy floor? Well, they probably think, well, it's a pediatrician's office. What do you think? It just reminded me that there is no filter anymore from public and private behavior anymore. Like, we're just allowing children to just be any way they want to be and and not teaching them how to behave in, in a public realm with strangers. It was annoying. It was it was really annoying. So I told her, I'm like, I've been cured of my baby fever. I've changed my mind. I can't do it. <laughs> and I still, it. Olivia plays with her... Uh her little onesies that she had when she was a newborn she puts Mm. them on her dolls Mm -hmm. so whenever her laundry gets done and i find one i like bounce it up and down and throw it over my shoulder and i'm like oh little baby (laughs) (laughs) yeah i i'm okay with no longer padding the nest with small ones i'm not ready for grandkids i'm too young for grandchildren but i assume that they'll be here sooner than i want 
And so I'll deal with it at that point. But I have been having dreams about my son being a little baby again. Two oh, in a really? row. That's it was, weird. It was freaking me out. The dream was I was sleeping and I heard him crying really hard and yelling, I'm sorry. And I woke up in my dream. I got out of bed and I come running out and it, it's a grandparent figure, but it's not our mom. And mm-hmm. she's cutting his fingernails and he doesn't like it. He's never liked it. He hated right. it. Mm-hmm. And so I ran down there and I grabbed him and I looked at the person and I went, enough. And I yeah. grabbed my son and I took him upstairs and I gave him his like nani and stuff. Mm-hmm. It was so real. I could feel him on my body. Weird. I woke up and I'm like, God, I just wanted to be baby again. Mm-hmm. So bad. But I saw him this last weekend and I think that's why. Oh, okay. I saw him and he's so big. And I'm like, God, you're a man now. And he's like a manager and stuff. It's so weird. I'm just yeah. Like, God. And I just miss him being a baby so bad. And I don't have dreams about my daughters like that, though, interestingly. Oh, I don't know why. It's just something different about sons, I guess. <sighs> Isn't there? I mean, I don't know, man. Girls, at some point, they turn on you. Mm-hmm. And so you're you're fine with them leaving. <laughs> but sons, it's very hard. It's very different for a mom, you know, anyway. Yeah. And I don't care what anybody says. For me, it's difficult. He's my little prince. He always will be. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Ryan and I, I and I have been a little disconnected lately and he's oh. re- he's really into his dad. So Ew. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know what's going it's on. It's hormones, you know. It's it's hormones. They are so bizarre in middle school. You know, actually my son did go through a dad phase about that age. Mm-hmm. He did. He actually talked about living with his father, and I put a stop to that. And I said, look, <laughs> I'll only let the adoration go so far, okay? But no, you will not be leaving me at the ripe age of 12. So no, that won't be happening. But, you know, when you're in the same house, I can see how... I mean, because your daughter went through that phase. Yeah. She was enamored no, I mean, with her dad. Yeah, totally cling. But now, you know, her and I are little pigs in a blanket. So. Exactly. Exactly. So it, it shifts. Yeah, the one thing that uh, Daryl does not like is now it's just me and Malia and Daryl in the house. And he does not like that we gang up on him. Oh. And it, it happens <laughs> regularly. And he is he is he's completely out of the loop. He gets angry. He's like the angry 97 year old. I'm like, oh, no, I already know this or this. No, we're doing this or that. He goes, oh, and I say, oh, by the way, this weekend, this is what we're doing. And he's like, well, gee, thanks for letting me know. I mean, I only live here. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I forgot. I'm sorry. You know, this is what's happening in your life. We're just letting you know. That's funny. It happens regularly. And like, uh, he'll say, so what's for dinner? I was like, oh, well, Malia and I, are, we're, we're, we've already decided we're, we're going to have this or whatever. And he'll be like, all right, I guess that's what we'll have. And he'll go slink off and play his video games. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when that happened, but I think it's as she's gotten older. Then we just slightly look at each other and laugh. (laughs) I don't know why we're punishing him, but it's funny anyway. Speaking of punishment, and then we'll move to our ugly and awkward moments of the week. Okay. As you know, I like tools. I like tools that are dangerous. I am not allowed to have many, even though I want them. (laughs) And so I... It's because those tools don't like you. They don't. But I convinced Daryl, after much debate, that we need to buy a wood chipper. The only (laughs) thing I could have thought of is that he thinks he might have to use it on you one day. (laughs) Well, I wouldn't fit in the hole, though. It's very small. It is a uh, it's a residential wood chipper. It's not those giant ones you see where they create like a hundred pounds of mulch a second. It's mm-hmm. it's I'm not even big. It's not even as big as a lawnmower. It's probably I think the the whole thing it probably goes to my the my boobs the height of my you know mm-hmm. so maybe like four feet three feet tall and then it only chips branches and sticks that are like oh i don't know maybe an inch in diameter so to me that's big you know as far as width but you know it's just for the little crap like we trim all of our trees and stuff the little Mm -hmm. branches and stuff and so we have this little pile of branches and trees and stuff in the corner and i'm like we have to get rid of that and basically what happened is sunny our blind dog 
our little Sheltie, mm-hmm. he kills all the rodents in the backyard, even though he's blind. Right. He went in that wood pile and he jumped on the top of it and dug down and chased a rat out. Wow. And I said, that's it. We're getting rid of the, the wood pile, which is notorious for, for rodents, by the way. I mean, right. that's where they live. So we set this thing. So we get this thing almost two weeks ago. And Daryl had to do some traveling. And I said, well, do you mind? I'm going to go ahead and set up the wood chipper. He goes, you know, I would really like it if you waited. <laughs> and I said, why? He goes, Jamie, like, please. Like, can why, you just. Why do we have to have this discussion? And he, so he lies to my face and goes, well, I just really thought this would be something we could do together. <laughs> <laughs> and I look at him. I'm like, no, it isn't. I go, I, I go, fine. Then can I get the chainsaw out and I'll chainsaw the bigger logs instead and then we'll just do the he 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 does this face of resignation he's like Ugh. he's like like the napoleon dynamite he's like, Ugh. like Ugh. <laughs> and i said why why he goes he goes you think you can do these things and i go you sound like nemo's dad you think you can do these things but you just can't nemo and he's like it's true that's who you are you're nemo and i'm like oh my god so i waited and he's like, he goes, hey, so he sets it all up. He does it when I'm busy so that I won't interfere. And so then he comes and he goes, hey, I set up the wood chipper. It's really fun. Do you want to do it? I'm like, well, you know, I want to do it. He's like, OK. He goes, now, maybe you should get some shoes and I've got your gloves ready. And and I really think you should wear safety goggles. And I said, <laughs> I said I was going to do all of those things. He's like, all right. So I come out and I'm all prepared. And I have on shorts and a tank top because it's like 110. It's so freaking hot. And I said, okay. So he goes, all right, this is how you do it. I'm like, all right. So I do it. And I'm completely shocked by how violent it is because I didn't expect it. I thought it would be like a, honestly, I was thinking paper shredder. So I, I didn't think that it would be so like abrasive. So I put a stick in or a branch. I put a branch in and I, he goes, now you have to hold it. If you don't, it'll like whip out. And I'm like, okay. So I put it in. He turns around to start sorting out more sticks and stuff. So I put it in and it goes really loud and it vibrates my hand. I let go and a wood chip slaps me in the safety goggles immediately. Of course. And I'm like, thank God I had safety goggles on. And so I didn't tell him. Could have so lost just, an eye. Yeah, it would have been awful. And so I said, okay, well, I'm just not going to say anything and I'll just keep going. So I did a couple more and he goes, it's fun, right? I'm like, yeah, it's great. And so I, at this point, I'm like, I really don't want to hold them anymore because it's like vibrating so hard. It's making my hand feel weird. Right. So I start just placing them in and watching them. Of course, I whip myself immediately. Ow. Because they, they do get crazy. Right. And so... I'm like, all right. So I get a bigger one. I'm like, all right, well, I'll just start doing the bigger ones then so the little ones won't whip me. So I put one in and I immediately get it stuck in the oh, thing. And the whole no. thing grinds to a halt and it makes a really weird sound. And Daryl stops me. He's like, what did you do? And I said, I don't know. We had to take the whole thing apart. Are and you kidding me? No. I you had couldn't? Com- there's not like a reverse button? No. And so we had to take the whole thing apart. And it was wedged in there. And so he goes, how did you get sawdust in all of this stuff? And I'm like, I don't know. He's like, all right, all right. So I was relegated to sorting sticks for the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> because oh, gee, I couldn't. Well, that's all right. Because I had like scratches and stuff. I, <laughs> it was Girl, this is a fun. lot more violent than I thought this it was going to be. This is not at all what I thought it would be. This isn't like the movies at all. <laughs> so Jeez. it's fun. But uh, next time I'll be wearing like a turtleneck and sweats and, you know, Something. a scarf. Everything. Although I probably wouldn't be allowed to wear the scarf because knowing my luck, it would get stuck in there. No, me. don't wear a scarf. <laughs> no capes. Yeah. So um, anyway, news: a young woman at a fair oaks <laughs> passed away by a wood chipper. A woman who wasn't middle aged yet. <laughs> the tips had not scaled yet. <laughs> yeah, she wanted us to note that. <laughs> or her husband said we should note this because she's dead. We should note this. That's yes. funny. Anyway, so wood chipping over. I'm over it. Yeah. So Daryl gets to do all that work. He did a lot of work that weekend. I did wow. not do a lot. It is one more thing we have. And I still want the nail gun. He's like, in a million years, I will never buy you a nail gun. Uh, (laughs) Really? 
I know, right? I thought it would be it'd be great to have a nail gun. I thought he goes, "What are you going to do with a nail gun?" I'm like, "Um, build things." He's like, "What are you going to build?" I'm like, "I don't know, maybe a bench." <laughs> a bench. He's like, "A bench." He's like, "That means you have to go buy wood, Jamie." And I'm like, "I know, I'm aware." He's like, "You don't need this for Michael's crafts." I'm like, "Okay." That's true. I, hear you. I am not that I'm not that clumsy okay i can't even say that i i it's totally not true i am absolutely clumsy right so maybe it's not wise but i'll never stop trying <laughs> i'll never stop trying to never give up hope i'll never give up <laughs> anyway okay so it's time for our ugly and awkward moments of the week Mine is, I mean, it's funny, but it's, you know, it's not like, you know, Knee crazy. Slapper. Right. So as Ryan gets older, he asks like different shows if he can watch them because, you know, maybe he asked a couple of years ago, we said no, right. but now, you know, he's almost 13 Yeah. and I'm just like, um, yeah, I guess you can watch that. So yeah. he wanted to start watching the show friends and you hadn't let him watch that yet. Well, it didn't really come up. Oh, and that's true. So that's true. I had watched a few episodes. I said, well, let me watch a few episodes because I don't really remember. And mm-hmm. so I watched a few episodes and they talk a lot about sex. Yes, they like, do. Like a ton. Yeah. And so I wasn't crazy about it. And so mm-hmm. we were all sitting there eating dinner and he had told Victor that I was going to, you know, I had watched a few episodes and, you know, to see what I thought and then asked Victor what he thought. Mm. Victor's like, yeah, I don't see a problem with it. And so I'm like, well, Victor, I'm like, there's a lot of S-E-X in there. Because <laughs> <laughs> no one can spell. <laughs> and I spelled it out. And then Brian kind of looked at me and he's like, mom, I can spell. <laughs> So I'm and like, he's, and he's just old enough to be lippy about it too. He's like, you mean sex, mom? <laughs> and so he started laughing, and I'm like, oh my god, they can spell. <laughs> so, oh my god! Oh my god! It's coming from the house that used to work when they were little. Yeah, so, that's so funny. It was Aww, embarrassing. That's so cute. That that is funny though, because that is one of those moments where you go, well, I guess they're not babies anymore. Now they know. Because even Libby go, mom, it's sex. Yeah. it's like oh my god thank god she wasn't paying attention oh, but phew. that is funny uh that is a good awkward moment actually that's very awkward mine is of the physical nature okay there's a couple of restaurants in sacramento that we that are newish and that we've been told we should really check out and so there was one it's called alora in sacramento if you want to google it it's mm-hmm. very farm to table farm to fork or whatever they call it and they change their menu all the time it's seafood heavy so you have to really be open to seafood dishes Mm -hmm. but everything is super duper fresh and we've heard wonderful things about it so we for some reason strangely our daughter (laughs) who was never home had plans and she was spending the night at a friend's house i said hey it's saturday night i mean maybe we could be you know adults and go out on a date you know for the first time in a while and so we said yeah let's go so we got all dressed up we go downtown you know and we're like we're gonna have cocktails we're gonna be like adults it's gonna be so cool so we park and i i was wearing high heels of course because mm-hmm. I lo- i'm short and i also love wearing heels i absolutely love it and so obviously we've been together a long time he knows that he must hold my hand when we're walking anywhere where things are uneven and so we're walking even when they're not so we have a wonderful dinner service is impeccable it's everything was amazing so we're walking to the car and he said hey he's like no weird no spills no awkward moments i mean it was a flawless dinner i mean it was amazing and i said i know it was so great so he opens the car door and i immediately land on the curb with my heel and roll you know that one meme where it shows the cute girl standing and then she just her her heel like buckles on from under her and she falls yeah that is exactly what happened to me and i fell into the car (laughs) oh at least you fell into the car that's what i said i go oh my god thank god and he's like oh my god now it probably looked more violent than it felt because daryl's like he gets on his knees he's like are you all right 
And I said, I'm fine. He goes, are you sure? That looked like that really hurt. I'd be like, well, let's make a spectacle of it. Why don't we? <laughs> and I said, no, I'm fine. And I do what I always do when I trip and fall or fall anywhere. I'm like, I'm fine. It's embarrassing enough. Let's just laugh it off. Let's move on with our lives. Please. I just don't want to continue harboring over the fact that I basically crumpled myself into the car because I rolled my ankle on the curb. He's like, all right, fine. So it was embarrassing. In front of Daryl, of all people that I've known almost as long as my siblings, it's it was embarrassing. That's how bad right. the, that's how bad the fall into the car was. At least he's kind about it, though. If it had been us, we would have ridiculed you. <laughs> We'd be like, "You're yeah." Oh god, it would have been <laughs> relentless. Are you kidding? I'm having anxiety. You and I are you and I, and hopefully our sister. We're going out of town for your birthday in a couple of months, and I'm having anxiety about shoes. Because I know that I will ultimately trip and fall in a casino or somewhere, mm. a day, a club or something, and I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> Are I'm you like, afraid that history repeats itself? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Where I'm just standing and immediately crumble to the floor because yeah. I don't know how to stand. <laughs> you know what was worse? You know what was the worst thing about that fall, honestly, is we're standing in like this after show, after show. And I'm standing there, and I'm wearing a really cute skirt, by the way. I, and I, I, when I, when my my ankle buckled, and I fell to the ground, I did like a frog splay. <laughs> did you rip your skirt? No, oh, thank no, God. It wasn't t- It wasn't like that. But I did a frog splay. Luckily, I was wearing underwear because Aww. it was a shorter skirt because we were in a, a, a casino. Mm-hmm. And I did a frog split. Luckily, the people that were in front of me were so busy talking to others that they they may have seen it out of their peripherals, but they didn't see the show. Yeah. Right. Uh, luckily, that was so embarrassing, so embarrassing that I can't. I I don't even like to reflect upon it. It was such an ultimate awkward moment. I just can't even. I thought you it. passed out. I didn't know what happened. <laughs> well, and then the other, the, the woman that was, she's like, you're okay. You're all right. I'm like, I'm like, God. And then the other guy, our friend Adam, he's like, wow, I, I got to see an ugly and awkward moment in real life. And I'm like, you and everybody else, trust me, I can't go anywhere without someone having a story to tell when they go home. That's pretty much how that works. That's funny. But anyway, yeah. So now, of course, I have a big purple bruise Ow. on my ankle. And yeah, well, I didn't know. I, You know what? It was probably more violent than I even wanted to admit. But it was it was funny. Well, so, I think you win you this go. week. Well, thank you. I look forward to all the other awkward moments that we will have in our future. Yeah. <laughs> kind of nervous about them i was thinking about wearing flats <laughs> no i'm just kidding paula seriously i'm like god do i even want to maybe if i wear boots you know? yeah, something. will that help yeah, huh? something with some kind of stability something with a platform it's true and then i just you know it's funny re- reflecting on the wood chipper incident i was thinking even when i was doing it going i think we're more joanna than annie when it comes to yard work as far as, you know, the movie Overboard. Oh, right. She's called Annie and she's doing all the yard work. And she's like, she ripped the sucker's head off because they had the audacity to give her a chainsaw. Oh. And I thought, that's that's us. We're more yacht and caviar than we are uh, chainsaw and witch ripper. Yeah. It's just the way it is. It's like, well, I didn't marry well, did I? God. I don't want to do yard work. I think that's just it. I don't want to do it. Anyway. Well, I think that's a wrap for this week. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Please be sure to visit lipandclip.com for all your makeup needs. And also go to Amazon through our uglytruth.com website and uh, purchase a couple of things. that Both of those help the show, so we appreciate it. And you can also get some cool stuff. Other than that, I think you should have a fabulous week. We'll see you next time. That's a wrap. Thanks for listening and sharing the show. See you next time on The Ugly Truth.